what's it like, trekking? Well, to start with, there's no electricity. So a typical trekking day begins at sunrise and ends soon after nightfall. About six o'clock, a smiling Sherpa unzips your tent and pushes a mug of tea into your hand. Fifteen minutes later, a bowl of warmish water arrives so you can have a wash. Between then and breakfast, you've got to pack your hold all so the porters can be off. Unfortunately, it's still cold, so you need your down jacket, hat and gloves. These have to go in your day sack for you to carry. Breakfast is porridge, eggs and chapatis or pancake, toast and marmalade or honey, and tea, coffee or Ovaltine. Unless the weather is really bad, you'll eat this outdoors, so the Sherpas can strike camp and pack the tents. They'll usually leave one loo standing till the last minute. Don't forget to wash your hands in permanganate solution. By 7.30 you'll be trekking, led by one of the Sherpas. At this time of the morning, the light is often great for photographs, so it's important to keep your camera at the ready. The scenery varies from cultivated rice terraces and fields of millet through subtropical woodland, forests of larch and pine to bleak tundra and the snowy peaks of the Himalaya. Remember when passing Chortons to keep the shrine on your right. At some stage you'll overtake the porters, maybe resting their enormous loads or doko on one of the stone benches, Chantara. Later the kitchen crew with their pots and pans should rattle by looking for a source of water for a lunch stop. On arrival, between 11 and 12, you'll be handed a refreshing mug of hot lemon. Lunch is a two-course hot meal, maybe tuna, cheese, salad, baked beans, fried potatoes, cabbage, followed by tinned or fresh fruit, and lots of tea. How do they do it? The midday stop is a time to rest, write your diary and gaze at the view. You're 
partner off again and the group will have split into faster and slower walkers. I often tried to walk with one of the Sherpas, many of whom spoke quite good English. They were as keen to hear about life in England as I was to learn all I could about the religion, politics and music of Nepal. We even swapped folk songs. Some of the Sherpas might go on ahead and make a start on pitching the tents and digging the latrines. A canvas sentry box over a hole in the ground. If you've managed to reach camp by four, there'll be time to have a wash, wash some socks, relax with tea and biscuits and make your bed ready for the night. Make sure you know where your head torch is. If you're lucky, your porter will have dropped off your hold door. If not, you have a wait until he arrives. Not a problem usually, as many of the campsites are in incredible situations. At six you'll hear the billy banged, so you make your way to the mess tent, where a Coleman lamp will be roaring away. Dinner is a three course meal of soup, maybe chicken, rice or potatoes, cabbage and tin fruit or if it's someone's birthday, a birthday cake with more tea, coffee or hot chocolate. Unbelievable! I decided to stay vegetarian on my trek and I reckon that this, as well as filtering my water and being liberal with the antiseptic hand gel, kept me free of tummy upsets. After the meal, there'll be a briefing by the Sirdar about the plan for tomorrow. During this, your water bottle will be filled with boiled water. This is your drinking water for the next day, but also makes a welcome hot water bottle in your sleeping bag. You might have a sing around, but usually by eight it's too difficult to read, so it's time to find your tent. Did you remember your head torch? So, is trekking for you? Imagine the cold grey light of dawn when you couldn't sleep as it was so cold. Imagine finding icicles on the inside of your tent where condensation has frozen. Imagine looking outside to see the tents covered in fresh snow. Perhaps you need to run to the latrine because of something you ate. Your throat is raw from coughing in the thin air. Your whole body aches from the exertion of the past few days. You haven't had a decent wash. You've been told by the Sirdar that the route ahead is very demanding. A long day with much height gain and loss. The Sherpa has to cajole you to get your boots on and start walking. On the other hand, imagine wandering amongst the most dramatic and awe-inspiring landscapes on earth. Imagine putting Western values on hold to be, for a short time, part of a society that has developed at a more sedate pace than ours. One which is one of the world's poorest countries economically, yet culturally is one of the richest. Imagine sharing songs and stories with a warm-hearted, fun-loving, happy, gentle and generous people even if it's only a smile and a greeting of Namaste. In that case, trekking in Nepal may well be for you. But be prepared, Nepal will change you. <laughs>